So this past week, I and some of our staff leadership uh, got to go on a road trip uh, up to a parish uh, in my native county uh, where we were having a wonderful meeting uh, with the pastor there and his assistant about some evangelization efforts, a similar thing that they're doing in their parish that we're doing here. Um, so we went to Most Holy Trinity Parish in Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. Uh, Father Dave Kramer is the pastor and the assistant there, Vicki Mulligan. We had a wonderful time. And like I said, that's my home county. So after our meeting there and visiting their three churches in their parish, we went over to my hometown, Montrose, which is up there too on the western side of the county, and we visited my home parishes as well. And it was a wonderful experience of being on some familiar roads. You know, and it's like when you go to your hometown or maybe go to a place of your childhood, you have a lot of different memories, you know, mostly very good memories. I remember uh, we, were, we were driving uh, this Wednesday and we went past the place where I got in a car accident when I was a teenager. I was in the passenger side, by the way, uh, when I was a teenager, but that was a not so good memory. But uh, just so many wonderful uh, uh, abilities to appreciate the beauty of where I grew up. I grew up in an area that's called the Endless Mountain region in the northern tier of Pennsylvania. If you've ever been there, it's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And you know, when you're a kid, you don't appreciate things uh, having been there growing up. And so just being able to share with the staff there and, sh and showing this beautiful area made me appreciate those very familiar roads a little more deeply. Well, anyway, today we are in the third week of hearing from the Gospel of John chapter 6, the Bread of Life Discourse. And we have been doing a series this summer called Eucharistic Amazement. Our ability to participate in the Eucharist is the most amazing thing ever. And, and in this series, we are the, the purpose really is to understand a little more deeply why we do what we do, especially as people are coming back to church more and more often here. Why do we do what we do? Why do we receive the Eucharist? And why is that so important? So in the first week, two weeks ago, we heard of that famous miracle of the multiplication of the loaves. Jesus miraculously fed the 5,000. And in that week, we talked about how every week we experience that same miracle gathering here at the Eucharist. Jesus' new Passover from death to new life. We, in which He redeems the whole world. We are called and we are privileged in a way to, in honor, to fully, actively, consciously participate in this great mystery of God's love. We fully, consciously, actively participate both actively in our song and a response and also silently and passively in a way in lifting up our hearts in attention and prayer. Well, last week we saw in the story that the crowds follow Jesus. They follow Him to His home base in Capernaum, but they lacked understanding. Plus, they were still hungry for bread. They didn't fully prepare for the journey. They wanted the miracle worker to do that miracle again. And Jesus, as we saw, led the crowd and He leads us away from their empty tummies toward greater understanding and faith in Him. We said that in coming to church, we are not trying to earn or work for our salvation. We can't do that on our own. But the work that we do in coming to church and really loving our neighbor and just being good in general is a reflection of God's calling to us and a growing in faith. We are reflecting our faith and growing our faith when we come to this altar to worship in Him. Faith that Jesus the bread of life, will always provide for us in our journey. The service and honor, whether it's liturg or service is an honor and a privilege, whether it's liturgical service or serving the poor anywhere, because we are Christ's hands and feet in the world. Well, today we hear a continuation of the dialogue between Jesus and the crowd. Remember, they're in the synagogue in Capernaum, and the passage that they're probably reading is that passage about the manna in the desert. The Israelites grumbled against God, against Moses, and He provided them that bread from heaven, the manna in the desert. So that's probably the passage 
that the, the crowds are hearing as Jesus is now teaching them. So he's called the people to faith in him. A faith, and that faith will give the crowd more than a lifetime supply of bread. The promise of faith is that we will never hunger. We will never thirst. We'll share in life eternal. And then being raised up to God on the last day. That's Jesus' promise. But then how do the people react to Jesus' big reveal that he's the bread of life? John tells us this as we heard. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, is, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and his mother? So like the ancient people of Israel who complained and murmured against God and against Moses, the crowd here at Capernaum murmurs and complains against Jesus because he just described himself as the bread of light that has come down from heaven. The crowd sees this man right in front of them, a human being in flesh and blood, and they think they know him. This is similar to other passages in the gospel where Jesus is rejected by his hometown, the people at Nazareth who saw him grow, grow up, raised by Mary and Joseph. They think they know him. After all, he's just this guy. He's the son of a carpenter. Well, my friend, just like that murmuring crowd, sometimes our attitude about God and about church can breed a kind of familiarity that leads to indifference or boredom or even resentment. In our heads, we might acknowledge when we come to church and believe that we're encountering Jesus here. But in the busyness of our life and many distractions that we have, we can easily forget because church and religion can become that kind of familiar road that we often have traveled but don't always appreciate. So Jesus responding to the crowd's murmuring goes a step further in, a, in an amazing way. Now this is important. Up to this point, if you read carefully John chapter 6 and you think about it, we can take the bread of life to mean something merely spiritual. In other words, Jesus has taught the crowds to feed on Him the bread of life merely spiritually through faith. And it's in faith alone that we can have this promise of living forever. But then, He ups the ante. He reveals this. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. My flesh for the life of the world. So in the passage that follows, if you read ahead, Jesus makes it crystal clear that He's talking about His own physical flesh, the meat on His bones. My friends, Jesus doesn't feed us just spiritually. He also feeds us physically in our faith journey in the Eucharist here that we celebrate. Well, the point today that Jesus feeds us not just spiritually but physically has always been controversial. It was controversial from the very beginning in Jesus' time, as we'll hear in a couple weeks at the end of John chapter 6. Different Christian churches and denominations have different views on the Eucharist and Holy Communion, but I always say this, I say, we're not making this up. Catholic teaching is a literal interpretation of what Jesus says here. We believe that in Holy Communion we receive Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. It's not just a symbol. Well, how should we respond? How should we respond to this great gift? Well, first we should reflect on our reception of the Eucharist. You know, we may have a familiarity with coming to church and faith, but let's not let that familiarity lead to indifference or boredom or even resentment. Just reflect, do we receive Jesus in the Eucharist with reverence? Do we prepare our souls to receive this precious gift of His body? Perhaps for you that means first going to confession, 
Perhaps for some people that means having their marriage blessed in the church, in the Catholic church. And perhaps it just means coming to appreciate more deeply what can be a kind of familiar road. Now the bishop is calling people to come back to Mass, and I know there are different groups for, for which this is very difficult, if not impossible. And this is important that people maybe online hear this. There are those in our community, in our parish, that I know personally, who are immunocompromised. They're immunocompromised and they must continue to very strongly protect themselves. My heart goes out to you folks. There are families with young children, and those young children must be protected by their moms and dads. And then there are some people always who are homebound, and they can't come to church. Now, during this time in which this global pandemic doesn't seem to end, I completely understand some folks can't come to church for these and maybe other reasons. But then, however, however, there are those maybe listening, maybe some of your friends here or family who you know, they're going to restaurants, they're going to sporting events, but they haven't yet come back to church. And maybe for them it's just that church attendance was that familiar role that you stopped out of your, your routine changing. So if that's you, you're challenged now to renew that commitment to worship. You know, during this past year, the deacon and myself, we've seen so many people come back to the celebration of Mass and the Eucharist almost every single week. And it's been a delight and an honor for us to see people breaking down in tears after having been away from the Eucharist for maybe many, many, many months. I'm amazed by people's great devotion and love for Jesus, the bread of life. And so for everybody, whether you are at home or in person, I just suggest you have not just a, 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 uh, uh, a reverence for Jesus, but you also have a kind of plan if you're not able to always come to church. And what do I mean by that? Well, we still will be offering Holy Communion in the parking lot going forward in a reverent way, both after this Mass on Saturday at 5 p.m. and also after our Sunday 11 a.m. Mass around 12 noon. So make a plan maybe to, when you can, occasionally receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist or, or go to daily Mass as well. We're going to continue to live stream our mass because we're no, we know we're connecting with so many people out there and you can always make a spiritual communion it's not the same of course but it is something it's jesus entering into your home and for anybody who's homebound or your loved ones you please know we can arrange if they're comfortable a person starting tomorrow who will go every week to bring people the eucharist on sunday we're bringing back adoration in our church. We're very excited about that, starting on Monday the 23rd here in the church, and then down the road shortly after that, we hope to open our chapel here. Well, my friends, this is a great gift. The Eucharist is God's greatest gift to humanity. Jesus' flesh for the life of the world. And we get to feed on Jesus both spiritually and physically. The hope in store for us is life forever. So well, coming to church may be a familiar road, but don't take for granted that road. What a gift it is. Amen.